Okay, so let's take a little class data example for our first introduction to confidence intervals. So at the start of the quarter, I had you all give me a random number from 1 to 100. And I have this theory uh, that people tend to pick lower numbers. So here's my question. What percent of people will pick a number that's less than 50? Theoretically, you know, if you're picking randomly and evenly from 1 to 100, um, should be about half should pick a number less than 50 and half should pick a number more than 50. Uh, let's see if you're really random or not. Okay. Uh, so I took a survey and the results are right here in case you can't see them. So there's notation for this, by the way, this is a percentage, which is 38 out of 54. And then we put this little hat on top. This is notation that means this was a sample not a population, right? So we got a sample percentage. Uh, this works out to about 70%, by the way. Um, so definitely more than 50% of people pick a low number, it's, at least in this sample. So the real question is, are you guys just weird? Is it possible that the population is really around 50%? Or is this good evidence that people generally just like to pick a, a lower number, uh, that the real percentage is not 50. Um, so again, keep in mind the theory behind this is to say, yeah, I had one particular result that came out about 70%. Where is the real value, the real population value? And kind of worst case scenarios are that you guys came from the low end of the curve and the real value is actually higher than you. So the real value could be as much as that high. Or maybe you guys came from really from the high end of the curve and most samples actually come out even lower than this. Um, so the real value could be higher or lower than 70%, but the central limit theorem puts bounds on how much higher and how much lower. Uh, so let's figure that out and you know from the central limit theorem that we can figure out the size of a standard deviation and then we can go like two standard deviations up basically and two standard deviations down basically and that should give us this spread and you're thinking about dividing by the square root of n and all those things and it turns out that the uh, technology does most of that work for us so we can just focus more on what this means we can focus on interpretation and less on number crunching so remember this 38 out of 54, that's gonna be important. And then pull up StatDisk. Okay, so here's StatDisk. Under analysis, find this option, confidence intervals. And when you select that one, you want the, this is about a proportion, right? So later we're gonna talk about things that we're averaging. But right now, this is just a proportion. It's how many out of how many. It's not saying you averaged five and you averaged six and you are seven. We're going to average those. Um, it's just saying how many out of how many. So it's a proportion. And we're not comparing two different groups to each other. Uh, we're just doing one. So this is proportion one sample. And that's where we're going to spend all of our time in 7-2 is on proportion one sample. Um, so once you pick that, uh, there's a couple options here. There's confidence level. We're going to talk about that in a minute. For the moment, put in 0 0.95. And then notice it needs two other numbers. It needs the sample size, so how many people in the survey, and then how many people succeeded or said yes. And I know I told you to remember the numbers, and I have just forgotten them myself. So let's see. That was 38 out of 54. I knew that. So you say there were 54 people involved and 38 of them picked a low number, number below 50. Um, then just click evaluate. It figures out the size of a standard deviation and it goes two standard deviations up and two standard deviations down. And it gives you basically everything that you need to know. Um, 
Um, by the way, for this course, we are never going to use the Wilson score confidence interval. So ignore that one entirely. We are going to do 95% uh, confidence interval, the first one. Uh, so notice it gives you uh, the margin of error. It says it's actually about 12% up and 12% down. That's my uncertainty here, around 70%. And it does go ahead and tell you what those upper and lower numbers are. Uh, it says if you go 12% up from 70, you get to 82%, or slightly more, because uh, of this extra decimal. And when you go 12% down, you basically get down to 58%. Um, so typically in the book, uh, they'll mostly want you to write down just upper and lower bounds. So let's see, 0.58191. up to 0.82549. And if you need the other version, uh, let's get a little bit more vocabulary here. Uh, this number, this 70% in the middle, of the interval is called the point estimate. So if the book ever asks you for the point estimate, it's just the result that you got from your sample in the beginning. And if they ask you for the margin of error, Um, that's how uh, how much further up from 70% you're going, how much further down from 70% you're going. Um, and again, we have that number here. It was, margin of error was 12%, basically, 0.12179. Um, just a little note on rounding here. The book is not terribly consistent on how they round things. So when I do this in class, I always tell my students, just don't round. Just write down exactly what the technology spits out. Um, so that's what I prefer for you to do in your homework. I know that won't always match the back of the book exactly. Um, so look in the back of the book. Make sure your number you know, matches their number except for rounding. Um, and that'll be good enough. <clears throat> okay, so the final thing I want to look at, at least in this example, is... Calculating this confidence interval and this margin of error, uh, none of that is any good to anybody else if you can't explain it. So the last thing you'll need to do for every homework problem is write a sentence. You'll need to write a sentence that says what the heck this actually means. Uh, so right here, uh, you would need to say... Uh, you'll need to talk about what you were trying to estimate. Um, so you say something like, yeah, the true percent of people who pick a number less than 50 um, and if I really want to be explicit here, I should probably say who pick a number less than 50 when choosing from 1 to 100 is between. This is like the hard part of writing the sentence. It's just describing what you were actually um, trying to figure out, right? Or at least that takes the most writing. I guess it's not hard, but uh, that's where you'll spend the bulk of your time writing. So you'd say, hey, I was trying to figure out this percent, and I'll say, what percent? And you'll say, oh, yeah, I was trying to figure out the percent of people who pick a number less than 50 when they're choosing a random number from 1 to 100. Anyway, all that to say, uh, the true percentage of people who will do that is between 58% and 83%. And when you're writing your sentence, you are trying to make this a user-friendly statement. General public. Uh, so this is the time to round. 
and turn it back into a percent, right? So these decimals are great. That's what I want when they actually say, what is the confidence interval? Then you should definitely write that. But when you write your sentence, make it friendly and say the true percent is between 58% and 83%. Um, so it may be that it's not 70% of people that choose a low number, but it seems like it's definitely more than half of people. Uh, it'd be somewhere between 58% and 83%. Okay, so in the next video, we'll take a look at an actual problem or two from the homework.